Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Wei. I'm a PhD candidate from Tsinghua University. Uh, today, I'm glad to talk about our work about cold start local event recommendation. Uh, the collaborator of this work is Professor Jian Yong Wang, who is uh, my advisor. So let's begin our journey. Uh, this is the outline of this talk. Uh, I divided this talk into four, into four parts. The first one is the motivation part. It illustrates the key concept of the code start local event recommendation and some insights of this work. And besides, we give some most related works in this part. And the second part concerns the proposed model. Uh, it illustrates the insights of the model, the graphic model, and uh, the learning of the model, but without enough or uh, without many details. Third, we gave some comparisons in the experimental part uh, to demonstrate the ad advantage of our method. Finally, we gave a simplified summarization of this work. So first, first thing, let, let me give you an example of the event. Uh, this is a figure extracted from Douban, a Chinese large community website. As we can see here, it, the, this event is about a music concert, concert. It is published, or we can say it is organized by Momo. So we call here, it is an organizer. Uh, besides, the organizer should specify the starting time of the event here, and the location where the event will be held. It's, it's there. Uh, and finally, to make the users better understand, understand the event, the publisher should give some detailed introduction of the event. Uh, we call here the content information of this event. And finally, if a user want to attend this event, he should register the event online to express their attitude to attend this event. For example, we can see that when, before I extracted this figure, already 21 people registered to attend this event online. This is 21 here, yeah. So let's move on. Uh, here we explain what is the local, what is the local event here. Uh, we extracted two figures from Douban and Meetup respectively when I logged in, this, in their systems. As, as we can see, all these two websites constrain the events we can choose to be within Sydney, the current city I stayed in. This is a meaningful design because users all, always tend to attend near, nearby events, such as this figure shown. It is a cumulative probability distribution about uh, users attending the events with the change of distance between users' current locations to the events' locations. As we can see here, uh, more than 18% events have been attended by the users within 20 miles. This is another figure extracted from my previous work. Here is the reference. So, for, finally, what is Cold Start Local Event? Here, the Cold Start concept is uh, similar to the Cold Start item in traditional recommender system problem. That means no one. Uh, that means the item hasn't hasn't been interacted with any user. Here, here in the in this task, we mean that zero people registered to attend this event online. So what do we want in this task? Generally speaking, it concentrates ranking the code start events in candidate list uh, based on the predict predicted score from the constructed model from training data. So why do we address the code start in this, in this recommendation task? First, Code start problem is common in the recommender system. But in this task, as we shown before, 
each event has a starting time. So if out of dated events are recommended to users, they are mean, meaningfully meaningless because out of dated events here means that the event already began or ended. So we can't attend this, this event because they are out of dated events. So when recommendation, we should remove the out of dated events from the candidate list, which in turn increase the ratio of code start event in the whole candidate list. So it becomes more serious for the code start issue here. And uh, finally, we can recommend many new publish, published events just as traditional code start recommender system do. So if we want to construct the model, we should design which knowledge can we use in this task. This is the later work of invent. As, we, as I discussed previously, uh, there are many key components connected with invent. This is an invent. This is another invent. We can say many things connected with them. And besides, you, social relations occur between many users. Many previous studies show that connected users tend to have similar preference. So we can use them. As we can see, uh, inventor recommendation task is a newly relative, relatively new task here. Uh, two papers published in, in 2014 address this task. But it, their problem setting is uh, different from ours because they assume that all events are warm start, so they can learn the representation of events from training data directly, while in our task, we can't, we can't learn the event representation directly. Besides, some of these works ignore content or, or organizer information of events, while other work didn't integrate content modeling in the whole model. So let's explain the key aspects of our method. Uh, partially, partially speaking, our model is uh, our model is depend on depends on basic Poisson factorization and the collective matrix factorization. Basic Poisson factorization is published in 2014. And uh, the main advantage of this model is that he can model in content, content and uh, implicit feedback well. And uh, the training speed of it is fast. However, the original form of basic Poisson factorization can't handle diverse relations in their model. So we resort to the idea from collective matrix factorization so that we can make the original BPF to handle multiple relations in our problem. So from a high perspective, our model is, a, is an integration of the above two methods. So here is a graphic representation of our model. And the core, the core point here is that we represent the event representation with, with, with organizer representation, location representation, and content representation here. And besides, we model social relations in this part. We should emphasize that we don't consider time factor here because in our experiments, we find that time factor do not show promising results in event recommendation. This is the, the main reason may be that users can't decide uh, their availability when the starting time of, their, of the events because, uh, because organizers always, always publish these events in a long time ahead of users' current time. So they, we think these online registration behaviors may need to reflect user's preference. <coughs> so 
Here is a joint probability about this graphic model and uh, contains some integration of, cop of coupled uh, latent variables. So the key step to Bayes signaling is to get the posterior distribution. That is here. But due to the coupling, coupling of latent variables here, we can't directly get achieve this posterior distribution. So we resort to variational inference. The basic step for variational inference is to design a variational distribution that is Q theta beta here to approximate the posterior distribution. And generally, mean field form of variational distribution is adopted because it's simplicity. And uh, many other methods, such as latent Dirichlet allocation, adopt this. So based on the designed approximate distribution, we can simplify the original optimization target. And uh, we use GNC equality to derive a lower bound of the original objective function. And then, by, uh, and then we can use codilate learning to optimize parameters, optimize one parameter each time while fixing other parameters. Uh, in this scenario, all parameters have closed form solution because the, uh, their conditional distribution of each part has an exponential form. And uh, based, on, based on the conclusion from the paper list here, that we can get the con uh, closed form solution for each parameter. Uh, for more details, you can uh, read the, my paper and uh, the reference listed in the papers. So after learning, we can get the optimized user factor, event content factor, organizer factor, and the location factor. So let's go on to the prediction and the recommendation step. Uh, we should uh, be aware that before prediction, content factor of code start local event are uh, unknown, so it should be inferred automatically before we do final predictions. Then the, then the prediction formula is listed here. Uh, as we can see, the first part here is that the user factor, and uh, the last three parts correspond to the organizer factor, content factor, and the location factor. They are used to represent event. Uh, and uh, when recommendation, this is a general step for recommendation system. So let's go on to the experimental part. Uh, we constructed the data set from Douban. And uh, for pre-processing, pre we should do Chinese word segmentation and uh, st filtering stop word and uh, less infrequent words for the Chinese text. And uh, we filter users occurring few times in the whole data sets. Further, we construct two local cities here there are two largest city in, cities in Beijing. And for evaluation, we do data segmentation to ensure that all code starts local event in test data set don't occur in training data sets. Here is the evaluation metrics. Uh, the three metrics adopted here, they are pre-seen, NDCG out, uh, Perlation M, and uh, the, the last one is MR. It is used to measure the first right recommendation result. And for comparison, we need four groups of comparison here. So let's go in further detail. Uh, the first one is about to verify the location-based method. Uh, here means all these three methods only consider location information for event recommendation. The first one is a distance-based method, and the second one is region-based method, partially adopted by the this paper for event recommendation. And the last one is BPF, considering only location. Uh, as we can see, 
The results showing here that we, we directly consider location information with BPF can achieve better results. And the second, uh, this is a result about testing the content information only. Uh, we list the four methods here, and uh, we find that CBPF, that is that only considers content information, can gain better results. And uh, we should address that the second method is a topical based of similarity, which adopted in the this paper for recommend inventor recommendation. And the third group comparison is about to test the single factor, that is content, location, and organizer. Uh, we can easily find that only considering organi organizer information is most important for this task. And finally, we integrate multiple factors to do the final comparison. Uh, we adopted several alternative methods. That these are tensor factorization, MFLM, and the world-based MFLM. And we can see that uh, our method CBPF outperforms other alternative methods. And the social relations play, play a minor improvement for these methods. Finally, we can conclude our work here. Uh, we propose a new problem that is code start local inventory recommendation. For this task, we propose collective basic Poisson factorization, that is short for C CBPF. And uh, in the re result part, we find that we can get better recommendation results than several other uh, alternative methods. So uh, th that's the end of my talk. Thank you. Thank you all of you for listening to my work. Thank you. Hello, it's a very interesting work. And uh, can you um, talk more about um, how do you infer the uh, uh, user and uh, content and uh, local in, uh, informations? Okay. Uh, so here, the, the user factor is learned in the training stage. The organizer factor is also learned in the training stage. And it is similar to the location factor. But for the content factor, uh, it is inferred in the prediction stage because we can't see the, can't see the content of the code start event. Yeah. So, um, Yeah, it's a very interesting topic. So uh, as we know that social network has a lot of noise, right? Yeah. So when you integrate social network into your model, do you do any kind of denoising or any pre-processing for your network? Yeah, actually, 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 actually we filter. Uh, we not only use a social relation. That is binary social relation. But we also uh, filter some social relations that the users don't attend many co-occurrence events. So, so for example, if two, your, two users are connected, but they only attend one common event, we filter them. Yeah. So how do you set up that threshold? Well, how do you determine what uh, should be your right threshold for that? Th this can be done because we, we, uh, we segment the data sets into training, validation, and uh, test data sets. We test them and tune the parameters in the validation data set. OK, thank you. <laughs> 